Today's video is about polar aligning off of the sun. And you might ask yourself immediately, why would I want to do that? Well, let's say you have an upcoming solar eclipse and you're setting up for that. Or let's say you're, you're just wanting to get a big head start on the night and be uh, really close to a uh, real accurate polar alignment before nightfall. Or it may be the case that you're, you're having to go to a remote site and for the first time and, and set up. And also, uh, if you've done solar before, you'll, you'll say, well, you don't really need anything beyond a rough polar alignment. Pretty much you don't even need that. You just basically set the mount facing somewhat north and you can get away with it. That may be true, but um, if you're doing long time lapses, then, then what you're going to find, especially at long focal lengths, is that the sun is drifting out of the frame. And it's going to be a nightmare trying to animate, you know, video over long periods of time when there's constant movement in the frame. So it, it's a good technique to do. It's just really simple. And it'll get you really close to... Uh, an accurate polar alignment and from my experience I, i'm i'm pretty much close enough that i can i can set up guiding and all of that off of a drift line on the sun it's it's a good technique but um, before we get into the video use all the precautions that you would for solar So you can use the compass on your phone. Just make sure that you have the settings to true north. And you also want to, it's a good idea to back it away from your, your rig because the metal from your rig will interfere with the, the compass on the, the phone. But you can get a general bearing on true north that way. If it helps you, you could put a stick in the ground at this this position. You could uh, move the phone ahead of the tripod, place another point at true north, and then draw that line through there and kind of get you a better idea. But I just eyeball it. It's approximate, pretty close. That's going to get me where I need to be. <clears throat> the next thing that I'll do is is just check it roughly for level um, you're relying a lot on the mill scale of the paint and the shape of this base to be perfect and uh, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect but as you can see my rear leg needs to come down a little bit and you'll have to check this frequently because if you're like me you have to carry the unit in and out frequently it's going to change on you but it doesn't have to be exact don't be too picky with this but fairly close to level is is a good idea when you're doing this you're not going to have your spreader bar attached so it's important that you kind of try to pull the legs apart as far as you can because what you don't want to happen is you set up your your level and then when you go to tighten the spreader bar, one of the legs pushes out where the hinge isn't fully extended. So make sure you pull the legs out outwards. It's also a good idea if you're using it on bare ground like I am to implement some kind of a flat stone to prevent these feet from sinking. Um, they have really sharp points. And as the ground table water level changes and depending on your your region, um, you'll find your tripod sinking on one side or the other and that'll totally throw off your polar alignment. So it's important that you have a, a rigid surface that's gonna not sink over time. Also, if you're placing your tripod on cement and even with solar, uh, it's important 
to take a garden hose and wash down the surrounding areas so you don't uh, have any radiant heat coming off of it. So if you absolutely have to image with your system set up on asphalt of any kind then, uh, or concrete, then you might want to wash that down, cool it off. I have learned not to rely on these bubble gauges for level that's on the mount head itself. Um, this one in particular looks pretty good. This is an Orion Atlas um, 2. So I'm lucky. Uh, I, w I shouldn't say lucky because I haven't owned enough of them to know that, that this could be a problem with some of them. But some other brand mounts, and a lot of people will talk about this on cloudy nights, these aren't seated perfectly level. So if you're going by the bubble, you may be tilted one way or the other. It's a good idea to use the conventional level across the mount head base as opposed to relying on these but if you can in fact confirm as i can that this is centered then then you can use this earlier i mentioned that you wanted to make sure these hinges were fully extended so that when you tighten the uh the tripod spreader that it doesn't kick the legs out um, it will push them out to some degree that's just the nature of this thing um you're never gonna get it perfectly level, but as long as you're you're fairly close, then that's okay. But you can see, you can hear it, listen. That's the feet scooting across the cement as it spreads the tripod. Um, I had them pushed out all the way, but it's still gonna find a little bit of room there. But you want this to be nice and rigid. This is after all the, the base of your platform. Um, another thing I've seen set up videos where guys are placing the mount head. Um, it's really important when you carry these things around that you have the clutches disengaged. You don't want to grab it and under its own weight be forcing across a closed clutch like that. Um, just make sure these this can swivel freely in both axes when, you, when you're transporting it around. That's important. I love these measurement markers on these um, Los Mandy plates because you can align it really quickly for balance purposes on the mount. I wish they would start implementing some kind of a hash mark on these um, counterweight bars so that you could you know exactly where your weights went. Yeah, you can mark them with a marker or something, but it would just be nice to have some kind of a measurement increment there. But yeah. These are nice. <clears throat> I've got the mount automatically slewing to the sun with the ASI Air Plus. Um, I've never been able to successfully pull this off. Uh, and I'm not so sure if it's just my settings or what, but it's usually pretty close. Now, as far as your, your latitude scale goes, um, as cool as this looks compared to most of the lower end models, um, it's not ever gonna be exact. In other words, whatever your latitude is, you're gonna find that it lands on polar alignment somewhere between hash marks <laughs> because uh, you just can't expect these, these markers to be very accurate and they're not. Um, but if it's your first time setting up a mount, you can get a, a rough uh, placement of that. If you continuously level your tripod when you set it up, bringing it in and out, and you've had it polar aligned already, then you shouldn't have to adjust this very much. So that's the situation I have right now before I do my testing. Um, first, I've got to get centered on the sun, and I'm pretty sure this is going to fail in the process, but just wanted to point that out. Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> it's real fine hot pixels and that sort of thing. It is, it's not gonna validate the sun. Let me know in the comments if you're able to do that, um, whether you're using video mode or what, rather than preview. But if you have the uh, ASI Air system, let me know if you can um, you can automatically slew to the sun. I, I, I'd be interested to know how you're doing that if you're successful with it but anyway 
something uh, important here to, to note that you do want to be in um, in solar tracking rate. Well, in defense of the ASI Air Plus, it did a fairly good job of getting close. I'm within the finder anyway, so not too bad. I just a few adjustments here, and and I'll be where I need to be. So whether you're using the ASI Air platform or SharpCap, Fire Capture, whatever software you're using, a reticle is, is really useful here. Um, if you're trying to do this visually through an eyepiece, I highly recommend a reticle eyepiece. You can make one with dental floss and that sort of thing. If you're into DIY stuff, there's places online you can find information for that. But what we're looking for is, is the sun movement in the frame. Um, and that's going to tell us what, what adjustments we need to make on the mount. And it's no different than, uh, than using a star at night. If you have the luxury, as I do, of having a full solar disc, it's really easy. Um, chances are you don't. You're probably a lot more magnified. Um, you're probably either using a refractor or a reflector with a higher focal length and a white light solar filter. So in that case, you may need to use a sunspot. If there's none available, then then put the limb in the center and just whatever you can as a reference point to look for your drift because that's where we're going to make our corrections from. I also recommend going somewhere like Soho's website and look at the orientation of the sun and try to match that with your camera sensor so that when it comes to muscle memory and making corrections on your mount, they're always going to be identical. Um, with exception to crossing the meridian, obviously, but for the most part, your your initial setup will, will always be the same and you'll be able to make the same adjustments and arrive at the same uh, uh, alignment. So that's a helpful tip. Um, it's, I use that method. Um, you don't have to, but it just makes remembering which way to make adjustments a whole lot easier if you if you always keep the sun orientated the same way. So typically you're going to let your mount settle and you're going to allow for at least a minute worth of time to see where your sun drifts to so that you, you can make accurate assessments on how much correction you need to make. And the corrections you make on the mount, um, in this video you can see it's, it's pretty close. Um, yours might be moving a little bit faster than that but the adjustments you make are very small in most cases. If you follow the initial steps of using a compass or your phone's compass to uh, align the mount to true north, then it shouldn't be too far off to start with. You'll notice some drift, but it, it should be uh, very small adjustments that you're making on the mount. And then you'll let it settle. You'll watch it another minute, at least give it a minute, two minutes is better, but um, recenter and then wait to see where your drift takes you. And then I'll give you the key to, um, to figuring out which way you need, what, what exactly adjustment you need to make. So I put the key at the end of the video, but for now um, it's important to know that for the sake of this video, I'm using a refractor and I'm using a diagonal with a camera. Now, if you're using a reflector and that sort of thing, you're going to have to reverse some of the instructions. That's obvious. Um, that's the way that the, the light is reflected back or passed through the instrument. Um, as you can see in this video footage here, I'm pretty close. Um, I'm pretty certain that, that nightfall will come and I'll be pretty spot on on my polar alignment. It, it looks pretty good to me. And over the course of uh, two, three minutes, I don't see a whole lot of drift. So I'm, I'm about as close as I want to get. I'm happy with this and um, we'll check it out when uh, when nightfall comes, we'll see what kind of result I got. But I'm, I'm pretty confident looking at this that it's, it's gonna be a good one. So it's nightfall and let's see just how accurate my uh, drift alignment off the sun worked. So we're waiting on the scope to rotate, do its thing, count stars and polar lines. So if you're familiar with the air, this is, this is the process. Let's see how close we got. I 
not too shabby. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Um, this is a pretty good result. Um, you can you can you can get in here every time, man. I'm telling you. So try it out. Uh, learn the technique and uh, master your adjustments. And um, I'm happy with this. I mean, I could fine tune this, but um, I'm good with this result. And and knowing you can get here during the day, it's just. It's phenomenal, especially for uh, for a remote setup. So let me get on with the key and and give you a little bit of information to get you started, and and hopefully uh, you'll put this to use. Okay, when your scope is pointed east, as you can see here, the sun is rising in the east, and this is about where the meridian lies, and then it sets in the west. If you're four hours beyond the meridian and your scope is pointing eastward, then you need to make the corrections as shown in the illustration. So in the illustration, when I say that you're pointed at the celestial equator, then the body, the polar body rather, of your, your mount should be practically parallel to the ground, to the horizon. So your scope will be in this orientation right here. If you're new to astronomy, don't confuse this line here, which is the meridian that separates north from south with the celestial equator, they're two completely different things. When I mention the celestial equator, I'm talking about Earth's projected equator out onto a celestial sphere. And I'll show you a drawing of that so that it'll make sense. But north to south is, is the meridian. And it's a completely different line than what you'll see for the uh, celestial equator, which is here. I'm sure this video will inspire a lot of questions and I'd feel free to ask them. I would be glad to help you out. Um, I hope you try it and you find that it works for you and um, hopefully it'll be one more tool you can put in your bag and, and make this hobby a whole lot more enjoyable and, and easier. So with that said, I hope everybody's doing well and as always, clear skies. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under